The jointed baitfish technique is a great way to build a game changer type streamer. Brent will be demonstrating a method of, of creating a realistic fly without the visible joints. For the materials, we are using three sizes of hooks to match your bait fish end. And using a flat white 3 aught thread, there is two white hackle tips for the tail. The body is wrapped with palmer chenille and polar chenille and covered with predator fibers. The throat is red poly shimmer. For accents, there is polar flash and also flashaboo. To finish the fly, we are using dome eyes and UV resin. Oh, good day, folks. Today we're going to tie you up a um, articulated fly here. This one here is a really large, thick shaped uh, bait fish right here. Showed on my other video. This one, uh, well, it's, it swims really nice. This one here, I'm going to uh, tie a little more EP style. That one there is tied like uh, the way I do my bait fish. But they're going to be a game changer, a game changer a variation. A fly developed by Blaine Chocolate, Chocolate uh, a number of years ago. So coming in here, the side of this little bass neck here, just getting kind of picked over. These little spades work just great for this. Going curve them in to each other. Come over the top. And get them down the top here. We're going to be using some nice heavy thread. This nice uh, big fly thread. It's flat and white. You don't want any color showing up in here. Then I'll come in with some of this polar or crystal chenille. It is medium size. Tie that on the rear. You can use shanks on these flies. I'm just doing it with hooks because a lot of guys don't have the shanks or jaws for it. I do have jaws for I can change out and use shanks on here if I want but the hooks just work fine too. There's a lot of guys that do a lot of these game changer style flies. That's really their they kind of almost got their own following. Okay we'll get rid of that material. We're done with that. And then we'll bring in some of our this is our uh, predator Fibers from Superfly. We're just going to tie. This one's going to be more of a, just a more slender tie than the last one I showed you. The big thick guy. And I'll come in with some of this light, other color yellowish, off color over the top. That'll look all right when I get everything done and brushed out. Just tie that off. These hooks all get UV uh, epoxy on there. I'll be putting bone dry on them, but we'll just keep going here just to save some time, okay? I'll bring my next hook in here. A little larger. These are all going to be uh, salt water hooks. Of course, they won't rust up on you. If they're not salt water. Okay, now I want to bring in some uh, Power Pro braid here, this 50 pound braid. Really nice. Come a little bit out the front. Get this wrapped down and fold it back over itself. It just ties down so much smaller and handier than, let's say, intruder wire. And then I'll bring in my tail material, tail section. I'm going to bring that up nice and close. And get that. And I don't want these, these flies to be seen that there are three different flies swimming. I want to look like it's one, one bait fish, okay? That's one thing I really drive for is not to see any of the joints. Okay, now I'll just come in with a little another section of this white. This is actually a silver. We're going to come in with a lot, uh, a lot less material here. Uh, before I do that, I do need some more under chenille here. I'm going to be using this polar chenille that's much larger fiber on this section here. That'll give a little 
a little bit of bulk on the bottom so you don't need gives you more of the profile without putting so much material on now we uh, come in with the weight on the bottom here but we do need it to come halfway back okay that's important so it covers up come on the bottom corner bottom corner tape that off a little bit with your scissors there we go and then we'll just bring in some more of our yellow I'm going to do three colors on this one. I'm going to uh, make sure it comes about halfway. That's going to be tied top corner on each side. Kind of enveloped really nice. And I'll just kind of tease this back. I'm just with my scissors, I'm not cutting it. I'm just kind of sawing it so it fills that area up. There we go. I'll bring in a little polar flash for a little bit of lateral line down the side. Down each side with that. That'll be good. Now I'll just tease that alongside as well so nothing too blunt. Then I'll bring in some of the pale olive, kind of a nice seafoam green, really. It's called pure olive in the Semper Fly material line, if that's what you're using. And we'll come over the top. Just a little bit of these fibers really go a long, long way. I'm just going to kind of come over the top with this one. There again, we're just going to saw it, just kind of give it I don't want to, to the end of the tail. I wanted about part way there. Okay, that's good. That'll be fine. There's a wee little bit of space on the bottom there. You can just fill that in right like so. If there's anything Oops. of a hole you can fill it up like that you just keep looking at it work with that once you use it a few times you really get onto this but less is more i'm just going to show you how fine this one's going to be dressed compared to that last one and it's going to fish better too okay so that's got our back two sections done we'll bring in our business end here's the big predator hook on the front Actually, it's too big. Where did I get that? Let me go in my box again here. Man, oh man, that was a monster of a hook, that one. Just a little thinner wire of this one here, but holy smokes. That was where I got that hook from. Okay, we're going to dress the shank here on this one again. That, so nothing turns around on us. Then we'll get our Power Pro braid. Again, a little bit out the front. Just get that around. Kind of work with that a little bit. I'm going to wrap it over itself. Come to the end here. Then we'll grab our last two sections. Come in here, nice and close. Get some good turns on this. And you can put some cement on this too if you want to glue that down. These uh, wraps are definitely got our hold I'm not worried about it that back end is just going right along it's not nothing really no fish is going to hang on the back because we're cutting those hooks off so really not any need to do that 
Okay. Now let me get some of that polar chenille in here again. It helps with our getting that little bit of a void. I'm just going to cut that off because I don't have to spin that. When I spin it, I don't have them with back. Flies are just floating there. It will get in my way all the time. I'll just come through with a little bit of that pour. Just a few wraps. That'll be good. Okay, now I'm done with that. Come in with some of our white or silver. Light colored belly. And that's going to... I should have a little something to hold that together down there. I'm just going to come off the bottom corner there. Bottom corner here. I'm just going to kind of splay that out with my, my thumb. See how it's just barely getting around the shank there. This is going to come to about halfway of the, the uh, last fly. It just kind of covers that hole. These hooks are going to be a lot more fun to deal with once I cut them off. I could actually do that right now. Okay, I got. I gotta do it sooner or later. Let's get my uh, big nippers. These are big industrial side cutters. Cut that tip off there. Come in here now. Make sure you're wearing goggles when you're doing this. You don't want to be sticking one of these in your eye. there shoot like a bullet there now I don't have to worry about sticking my fingers in there that's that's the back part of the fly that makes things make it a lot more user friendly okay let's get back in the game here now we want to go with our lateral line which is going to be this pale olive kind of a blended nice little blend in there like so. Make sure that we got about the same length, just a little bit short on that side. So I'll come over here again. Okay. I'll take a little bit of this darker material here. Just more off the top. Right above and that kind of blends. That's coming in looking pretty good. Come up ahead here again. Now we need another little batch of the silver. Finish up. Now I'm going to uh, Get another longer piece in the bottom, but I'm getting very sparse. Bottom corner, bottom corner, and just let it splay around the outside, see? Okay, now I'm going to bring in the more of this yellow on each side, on this side. Going all to the end there, I don't need long fibers anymore back there. Okay, we're just going to kind of slim this one up. All right, and I'm going to come over the top with the green. Nice little one, it's going to splay that out a little bit. A bit of a taper. Then on the bottom here, just shorten these guys up. And then we'll come in short little fibers on the bottom. It's almost like the um, EP, like the little, just little bits added all the time. I need to go back here, that thread moved on me. I want to come, here's another little 
bit of a hole in there, so I'm just going to wait there. Wait there. That looks pretty good. Got so much extra fur off the side here. Now, going to bring in some more of this polar flash. Good time to add some more of that. This side, this side. I need to give that a little haircut after you're done. You look at after we get it brushed out. Okay, I'll well, get the darker material here again. We're gonna won't need very much. Okay, and then the white. Just about done there with that, but I think I might just find a little bit more. You just kind of keep building the bodies up. I want to build more of a um, shorter head up top here. Well, the top corner, top corner. Lead it where I want. I'm going to need a little bit of a throat on there. I'm going to put some red on here to make it look. This is just some uh, poly glimmer. Poly shimmer red. Poly shimmer, I'm sorry. It's really nice throat material. A little bit down the bottom there. And I just always. When I tie in one side, always comes the other. I always like to do that, kind of fold it back over. There, makes a nice throat. Okay. Now, how about a little bit of this polar wind? Nice little flash on the side. I'm breaking this up a little bit. Then we'll come over the top. It looks a little bit on the thin side, not really the shape I want, so I want to bulk that head up a little bit. Come a little short little chunk in here with a dark green. Put it over top. That'll help. There, that's going to give the profile I'm looking for right there. Then I'll just take some of this nice Bright green flash of blue over the top. That'll finish the top of it really nice. Tie it off and I'll get some UV. That'll finish the fly up. But good fly, they'll uh, Fish quite well. I'm just going to show you where we'll get the brush on it and then I'll uh, put the eyes on it here for you too. Just give me a second. I'll get my big um, big brush. Where is it at? Over here at my other table. I just get it on the my tying desk and really put a lot of pressure on it. I got this nice coarse brush. Get all those fibers to kind of blend with each other. And this is a little bit thick in here, you see that? So what I'll do is I can, I got some thinning scissors too. I'll just show you if you don't have them, just kind of run your blade in there. I'll thin that out a little bit. There, that looks pretty good. Not too bad a shape right there. Not going to push as much water as that other one, but not all not all bait fish are, are, are chunky rascals like this either. And this is going to be hard to throw if you got a you know an eight weight rod. You can get her done, but you better be double on. It's it's pretty wind resistant, but it does push water very well. That's 
that fly there I use a lot because I can hover that in a lot of different uh, so you know and keep her in the zone a long time predators sometimes I'll just sit you know pike or snook or whatever they'll just sit and wait for their lunch and they'll make sure you get your bait in front of them take your time they'll leave it there in front of them they'll come and eat it and I'll just take some I use marine goop when I put my eyes on but you just always finish your bait fish because that's that's your target is the eyeballs of course and uh, put that on but that's gonna be a whole nicer profile a little little thinner it's gonna really swim nice like say so you don't notice any of the joints in there put a little more flash it's a little brighter but uh, this one you can throw with an 8 weight no problem at all because it's got about half half as much fibers as that other one does. And really well, you don't, you're not going to see through it once it's wet. And like I say they don't pick up any any moisture. They're just they get false cast and they're both dry and they're ready to go. They're, these fish are really really good. So the predator fibers or EP fibers or something else. So that helped you out. That's another um, type of of a, almost the same kind of fly here, a little different profile, and uh, definitely one that I'd recommend having. And make sure you get the UV and put some UV resin on the front of these flies. And all the best. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Brent for bringing these new methods for tying and articulated bait fish. This technique has been very successful in saltwater and freshwater situations. You can tie these up in various sizes and colors for any of your favorite species. We appreciate you visiting us again and hope to see you soon on more interesting and informative videos and techniques from our pro team members. Check out our website for over 25 years of TV episodes, seminars, and demos. Take care and conserve our waters.